everybody and welcome to my video blog. Today I'm going to talk to you about the body mass index, often referred to as BMI. The BMI is used as a quick simple uh, tool used to classify people as either underweight, a healthy weight, overweight, obese or morbidly obese. I have a BMI chart here with me today. This BMI chart shows uh, how people can be grouped into the different categories of underweight, healthy weight, overweight, obese and morbidly obese. So on the bottom here of the graph we have the uh, person's body weight and running up vertically at the graph we have the person's height. So to estimate a person's BMI from this chart, we would first find their body weight, which in this case here is uh, 64 kilograms. So then what we do is we move vertically up the chart until we find the uh, person's uh, height, which in this case is 1.7 meters. So at the point where the two lines join, which is here, we then move up to the top of the chart in a curve until we find that person's BMI, which is then indicated at the top of the chart here. In this case, this person's BMI is 22, which suggests that they are of a healthy body weight. The shade of white here on this graph suggests that a person has um, a healthy body weight based on their BMI. The shade of yellow here would suggest that a person would be overweight and if they were in the shade of orange and the light red colour they would be obese and if a person is found to be in this dark red colour here they would be morbidly obese. The shade of uh, blue colours over here would suggest that a person would be underweight. One of the uh, main disadvantages of um, the body mass index is that it doesn't consider a body fat distribution. An example of this could be uh, that um, a woman who has a BMI of 32, but she has the ideal waist to hip ratio, which for women is 0.7. So, this woman's health risk of developing type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease is actually significantly lower than another woman that has a BMI of 25 but a waist to hip ratio of 1.1. In that case, her waist circumference would actually be wider than her hip circumference. And uh, the waist is the worst place in the body where body fat can be distributed. So, in such people that are shaped like an apple, their health risk of developing type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease increases substantially. Also, um, in rugby players, for example, or people that work out regularly at the gym and do a lot of weight training, they may actually come across as obese according to their BMI. So, for example, you could have a rugby player, again with a BMI of 32, but he has the ideal waist to hip ratio, which in men is 0.9. So even though he comes across as obese, his health risk is lower than another man that has a BMI of 25 and a waist to hip ratio of 1.1. So I would suggest that the waist to hip ratio is actually a more valid measurement of health status compared with the BMI. So overall, when using BMI, I would suggest just to use it as a guide. But when you do use it, I would recommend that it is used in combination with the waist to hip ratio. So keep a lookout for more of my video blogs here from Freezing Cold Western Supermare and goodbye for now.